It's another Ryan Garcia saga, and this time, it's Derek Chisora coming after Kingry for his unimpressive training sessions. In just a few days to the biggest bout of his career, it's expected that he's got everything put together. Let's get in. One wouldn't expect any less hype and drama from a fight that has been billed as a game of seven and touted as the final settlement to years of intense rivalry and enmity. Part of the drama that surrounds highly anticipated bouts like this are criticisms from professionals of the sport and fans alike, like the recent criticism Garcia has received from Derek Chisora. A match as big as this keeps the two boxers on the spotlight and at the epicenter of numerous actions and moments. And as a result, they swallow a lot of criticism for every one of their moves. And it's even crazier in a situation like this, where the two boxers are the very first critics of each other. After years of tension, two of boxing's most gifted fighters with an interesting amateur history will finally fight for the ultimate bragging rights. It is no news to the hardcore fans of the sport that there is a lot of bad blood between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia dating back to their amateur days. With a series between the two at 3-3, three, three, the young fighters compete for the first time as pros on April 20th, but it isn't in any way looking like the first time, as both boxers seem to be drenched in flashbacks of their amateur days, facing off with an intensity that typifies not just an amateur rivalry, but a professional rivalry. Something like that of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury that saw them head on to a trilogy to settle the score. You got to pay 200, 250 grand man. for what? For AJ's fight. You're an idiot. And AJ walked away with three million. You're an idiot. Who's the idiot? You're an idiot. Who's the idiot? You're an idiot. I got Who's the donkey? Grand. Who's the donkey? You, you look. Despite a deep amateur tradition and a winner takes all approach, they have different mentalities. Haney, the cerebral assassin who needs to win, is defined by his legacy in the sport. Garcia is a cultural institution for those in their mid-twenties. His antics on the internet have been seen by followers who watched him grow up before their eyes. His reach is vast. Garcia has yet to have that win in boxing that makes his fan base fully make sense, but this moment could be that. Though there are questions surrounding Garcia's status, he will fight Haney for the latter's WBC super lightweight title. Haney will put his WBC junior welterweight world title on the line against his amateur rival Garcia on April 20th from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, which will be telecast on Dazen Pay-Per-View. Haney has held gold since 2019 when he beat Zaur Abdullah for the interim WBC lightweight belt. Eventually promoted to full-time status, he fought George Cambosos Jr. in Australia in June 2022, beating the Aussie to win the WBA, IBF, WBO, and ring belts to become the undisputed champion. A rematch clause forced Haney to fight Cambosos again, where he once again outpointed him in his backyard. After that, Haney beat Vasily Lomachenko in a close contest to retain the belts. The 25-year-old moved up in weight in December and beat Regis Progress to win the WBC super lightweight title. Ryan's been talking so much, I feel like it's been motivating me even more just to end him and get him out of boxing because he's not taking the sport seriously like he should, because he's not being a good role model to the people that look up to him. He's got his platform, but he's not making the best of it, Haney said. <laughs> Garcia turned pro in 2016. He stopped Luke Campbell for the interim WBC lightweight title, but injuries and mental health issues halted his momentum. After beating Emmanuel Togo and Javier Fortuna, Garcia faced Gervonta Davis in a catchweight money fight, getting stopped in seven rounds. After the Davis fight, Garcia got a new trainer in Derek James, removing Joe Goosen from the picture. And afterwards, Kingry beat Oscar Duarte back in December via knockout, and his next fight will probably be the most anticipated and the biggest ever. But he has received heavy criticism for his training style from many professionals. He has been labeled a social media influencer and is only slightly different from influencer boxers like Jake Paul, who have zero boxing ambitions. 
Though it will be an utter exaggeration to put Jake Paul in the same sentence with Ryan Garcia, however, his triviality with the sport and his seriousness with social media has got many making the strange comparison. And sadly for him, he's been compared with his next opponent countless times, and he's come up short when the seriousness at which he approaches the sport is compared with that of his opponent. When asked to do the unusual comparison, Jeff Mayweather had exceptional praises for Devin Haney and had little or nothing to say about Ryan Garcia. Truly, Devin Haney and the Mayweathers, especially Jeff Mayweather and Floyd Mayweather, have a relationship that has existed since his amateur days. However, Ryan Garcia is the closer one to the family at the moment. And despite that, Jeff Mayweather had very little to say about him, but more to say about Devin Haney. At the age of 13, I was working with him, and I told his dad that his son's gonna be a world champion one day. And the social media guy isn't the one to stop him from that. I don't necessarily know. I mean, we don't, I don't think nobody really knows with Ryan if, you know, how serious he, I don't think he take the social media stuff as serious as, as boxing, because boxing is his livelihood. Unsurprisingly, the man who held the IBO super featherweight title from 1994 to 1995 has a keen eye for champions. He predicted Devin's triumph of the world and it came to pass. In Jeff's interview, he called someone the social media guy and it's none other than Ryan Garcia. He called Ryan the social media guy due to his excessive use of social media and the nuisance he constitutes there. He claimed no one knew which of the two Kingry was more serious about, his boxing career or social media. I don't really know. I don't think nobody really knows with Ryan how serious he is if he takes the social media stuff as seriously as boxing. However, having trained him in the past, he acknowledged Devin's hard work and tips him to use that as an edge over his opponent. Devin works extremely hard. He's been really working hard. I've known him personally, and he's been really working hard. That's why he's going to knock out Ryan. And now, Derek Chisora has also made similar comments about Ryan Garcia after coming across his training sessions. Daniel could have done better. He didn't do better. I don't care. He, he boxed poorly for me. He didn't use his double jab. He didn't use his advantage of being bigger. When he hit the guy... He not only spotted many faults and lapses in Garcia's training sessions, but he found them both funny and ridiculous. One very sure fact is that this sounds so contradictory. When one Ryan Garcia's earlier comments about his training that would come from boxing legend Floyd Mayweather, and truly, the pair were seen on video some time ago training alongside one another in Las Vegas. The footage was filmed by Andrew Capusetti and shows the Hall of Famer and the popular super lightweight boxer running, talking, and laughing in the middle of the night. Garcia also posted on Instagram last year that he was just working, listening, and learning from one of the best in the world during what appeared to be a training session at the gym. Sadly, we've hardly seen footage of Floyd Mayweather and Ryan Garcia having any session together in recent weeks as Garcia prepares for his bout in a few days. Rather, what we've seen is Ryan Garcia in his sitting room doing some punching exercises with a fellow whose identity is alien to boxing fans, and Derek Chisora had so much to say about this when he was interviewed. I see Devin Haney winning. He's been an undisputed champion, but he has less noise around him. He's really concentrated on his boxing. He's really concentrated. Garcia doesn't have the lifestyle of a boxer. He lives a careless life in my opinion. He doesn't train properly and he could lose to Devin because of this. I hardly find anything exciting about him, Chisora said. Chisora's claims might seem like an underestimation of Ryan Garcia's trainer, Derek James. Derek James's appointment came after Garcia sacked his previous trainer following his loss to Gervonta Tank Davis. But it wasn't only Derek Chisora that has got a complaint to make about Garcia's training style. Fans have also made their comments after footage showed Garcia shadowboxing moving in slow motion with James watching on from the sidelines. Fans have been extremely observant and spotted James's reaction to the drill, insisting it shows Garcia is in trouble for their clash. A fan posted a screenshot of James's reaction with the caption, Bro knows Ryan's done for. A fan agreed, he looks stressed, he looks like he wants to run away after dealing with Ryan. Fans also analyzed the footage with one writing, you really need to work on your footwork, Ryan. DM me for free coaching. But others were quick to suggest he is trolling.
come on, he's clearly joking. He has an extensive amateur background and has been coached by many top coaches. You really think he'll have gotten this far without someone correcting his footwork? He's just messing around. A final fan believed he had spotted another mistake and suggested, Chin not tucked, Ryan? Tuck it just a little more? Devin Haney hits kinda hard and wears you down over the course of the bout at a faster rate. Well, what was more shocking about Chisora's claims was that his claims about Ryan Garcia might be coming from his awareness of the split of Ryan Garcia and Canelo Alvarez from training in the same gym some time ago. Even back then, Canelo Alvarez wasn't hesitant to claim Ryan Garcia was a bag full of talent, but despite this, he lacked the discipline to give his all. The budding lightweight attraction caught the boxing world unawares some time ago when he announced he was leaving Alvarez's trainer Eddie Reynoso to work with Joe Goosen. Garcia cited Reynoso's inability to devote more of his time to training him. Garcia also had some beef with Alvarez stemming from comments the Mexican superstar made to the press last year after Garcia pulled out of a scheduled summer fight with Javier Fortuna in order to focus on improving his mental health. Look, Ryan has a lot of talent. But to me, in my eyes, he's wasting a lot of time and wasting his talent, Alvarez said back then. I look at him and don't see him 100% dedicated. And to us, that's a bad signal. In an interview published on the Boxing with Chris Mannix podcast, Garcia opened up in detail about how he felt betrayed by Alvarez for making those comments in public and not behind closed doors. Ryan Garcia believed Canelo Alvarez essentially broke gym code when the undisputed 168-pound champion came out with comments criticizing his work ethic. Did it get me a little... Was I shocked? Yes, Garcia said. I was kind of confused about it. I didn't understand why he would say something like that, especially to the media, because he could have definitely taken me somewhere else and told me personally. So I was kind of confused about that. I kind of took it as disloyal because I would never do that to him. I would never speak to him in the gym or what I think he should be doing. We're a team. We shouldn't speak ill of each other. And I know I've never done that and I never will. He's a great fighter, a great human being, and I hope the best for him. But when he said that, I felt betrayed. Like, really? Okay. For a while, Garcia and Alvarez seemed like the archetypal little brother, big brother tandem. Uh, I don't know what he's thinking about it, but he, he said he wants uh, more time, right? Yeah. In addition to training in the same gym, both fighters made it a point to appear at each other's fights and shower each other with words of praise. Garcia, however, felt the relationship was one-sided, that Alvarez did not show him the same level of affection. It does not help that Alvarez came in defense of Reynoso shortly after Garcia announced he was working with Goosen, saying that Reynoso had all the time for Garcia. To be honest, I don't really think he wanted to show me the love that I did. Garcia said of Alvarez. I don't think so, just based on other things. It's all good, man. I have a good heart and good intentions. I never wish bad on him. I think I'm in a good place. I'm happy. That ain't gonna change how I throw my punches, so I don't care. Garcia said Alvarez knew what I was going through, which made his critical comments all the more shocking. Garcia said the pivotal incident was when he walked into Alvarez's gym last year and found himself unable to continue with his workout after 20 minutes. He recalled breaking down in tears and having to leave. Alvarez was there, a witness to the whole event, Garcia said. I was just crying non-stop. I don't know if I can do this, Garcia said. Like you, Canelo, have seen it. It's true. I did leave 20 minutes in at the gym, but I would never do that if I was focused and getting ready for a fight. It was just a moment where I was broken down mentally. As to the notion that Alvarez was simply trying to encourage Garcia and get him to work harder, Garcia was skeptical. Garcia said nobody worked harder at the gym than him, including Alvarez, and presumably Oscar Valdez, Frank Sanchez, and Andy Ruiz Jr., to name a few of the other trainees under Reynoso. Garcia referred to himself as a maniac when it came to preparing for a fight and found the idea that he needed more motivation ludicrous. That's why I was kind of like, wow, you really gonna do that? You know me? 
You know I'm like that, Garcia said. I don't mess around. He knows that I never gave him any edge. I was competitive no matter what. They pushed, I pushed, and you were not beating me no matter who it is in the gym. They know that about me. That's why Eddie knew I was going to be great and he told everybody. That's why I was like, wow, I was kind of confused on what he said. I don't know what his motive was in that. What was the point he was trying to get across? You were just shitting on me. How does that motivate me? I am my own motivator. I got a lot riding on me. I don't need motivation. I'm a strong maniac training machine that I'll figure out to get this shade down. Like Michael Jordan, all that. That's me. Canelo Alvarez, Ryan Garcia, that's me. Floyd Mayweather, that's me. I'm that person. It's crazy for him to say that. Canelo and Garcia share quite a decent relationship between themselves, and if Canelo could make such comments about him, it really tells how much of a truth Derek Chisora's claims are. And when placed side by side with Devin Haney in terms of discipline, Ryan Garcia is really no match. The disparity in discipline and preparation that Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia have exhibited in their careers will surely be revealed in the ring as a wide chasm. <laughs> Vegas. Um, I think a lot of people were surprised it got as heated as it did because it felt like for a long time, even though you guys were adversaries, that you were friends. Was that fair to say? No, I mean, you know, we, we were rivals since, since young kids. That was the takeaway from a recent interview when analyst and former welterweight boxer Pauli Malignaghi went all in on the idiocracy that has popularized the social media darling Garcia. You enable and reward the idiocracy, and it's been rewarded for Ryan Garcia instead of him paying consequences for it, Malignaghi said. Getting this kind of fight is one of those things that enables it. He's popular and generates money. The fact is you don't have to promote the fight that much because he's got an idiot fan base that'll probably not watch it anyway because they're not boxing fans. It shows you the generation he's in and why the guy is so popular. Malignaghi admitted, following his criticism that I'm going to sound like one of those boomers. Garcia doesn't do himself any favors with his ability to put himself in a position to win and to maximize his promotability, said Malignaghi. I'm not even kidding. This one, hey, I'm going to take a toast to all the haters. All things said, the kid is still promotable if he gets his act together, but he doesn't maximize that or his ability to win by doing these stupid things. Garcia's downhill turn started at his Hollywood news conference, where he rode in on a horse and was preceded by women dancing with hula hoops, then turned dark, admitting that he smokes pot and drinks alcohol, and failing to answer when Haney asked whether he would show up for their April 20th fight at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Since then, Garcia has posted a series of troubling social media videos that some observers fear could be related to an ongoing mental health crisis. Yet Garcia's promoter Oscar De La Hoya and others have maintained the fight will happen. Separate from those issues, Malignaghi said, Garcia hasn't done enough as a boxer to prove he has earned this date. Is it just his ability to sell? Malignaghi asked. Anything in his last fight made him an elite of the 140-pound division? At what point in time did we see Ryan Garcia and say, wow, this kid is a world beater? Sure, he's had some good moments like stopping Luke Campbell, but he's not even really that good. He sells a lot, so they push him into big fights to generate pay-per-view sales. Haney's on a roll. Ryan Garcia may be regressing, Malignaghi said. Literally, I was on the... Oh, I'm drunk? Say less. At the end of the day, it goes like this. I was at, on the KD trail, and I told a woman, do you support pedophiles? She looked me in the eyes and says, absolutely. What Is it just, let's check his social media numbers? He's getting a lot of views? Algieri, who has known Haney since he turned 10, says the fighter and his team will be dead focused. They're looking beyond Ryan Garcia down the road, Algieri said. They're all about lofty goals. Team Haney is prepared to do what they'll do to get on to the next big fight. They'll make a lot of money in this fight and the next one. This is a stepping stone, Malignaghi agreed. It doesn't matter what Garcia's antics have been, the passion for the sport by Haney carries you through, he said. And Haney proved all of it in the first episode of a YouTube released feature, 40 Days, where he said, this is only the beginning. I have a long career ahead of me. I have years and years to dominate the sport. They just keep lining them up and I just keep knocking them down. 
Haney believes he is the best fighter in the world, and despite the history with Garcia, he is out to make a statement. I respect everybody that gets in the ring, furthered Haney. He is at the highest level for a reason, but it is for me to go in there and show him that you are not on my level. You are not Devin Haney good. That is for me to prove, and that's what I will do. Ryan is showing he is a kid, said Haney. I mean, look at his antics. Look at what he is doing. He is all over the place with it. The world is going to see how great I am, how much better I am, and how in the amateurs things change. And it is who became the better pro. And that is what all this is about. So you how Lil Nas X sold his soul, Katy Perry sold her soul, and I'm trying to expose that you could get your soul back. Whether Ryan Garcia is truly the joker he's deemed as, or he's a much improved fighter than he's been, April 20th has all the answer. But what do you think about Ryan Garcia's training sessions? Let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, peace out.